Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Saturday morning, so you know it's time for another live edition of the Extra Point. We got Tasha T. Sizzle decked out in her Nike gear. Yeah, you're looking mighty sprawl, mighty sharp here, Tasha T. Sizzle. How goes it today? Oh, it goes well. I had to do a little exercise in this morning on account of we going to have a reunion. And you know you can't go to reunion looking out of sorts because people talk about you. That is very correct. And you're trying to hide behind people in your pictures, and I'm not going to hide behind a soul. I'm going to be ready for that trip. I cannot wait. Remember, Tasha, to shout that out at the end of the show, by the way, because we, we missed that last week, and that is my bad. But we welcome you to another episode of The Extra Point. And, uh, y'all, we got a lot to get into, of course, again today. But before we do any of that, Tasha T. Sizzle, can you please give us a word from our sponsor? We are sponsored by May Jane's Coffee. That's M-A-E-J-A-N-E-S coffee.com. And guys, please bear with us. We've had a lot of technical issues, <laughs> difficulties today. So if you see me moving around a lot, it's because I am on my phone. Right. And shouts out to, to Apple, by the way, our unofficial sponsor for the day. Shouts out for the telecommunications. Uh, we're also brought to you by Wolverine Comics underscore TX. You can find Mr. Michael Hasso on Instagram and follow that for all of your comic book book wants and needs. Now, Tasha, we got a ton of basketball to get into, um, lots of movement in the NBA. But before we get into any of that, we got to talk about a story that has really captured the minds of the entire world this last week. And it's left me with more questions and answers. And hopefully, Tasha, you can help me with some of these questions that I have because I am utterly confused on why the hell this is even a topic today anyway. Um, for those of you all, all who have been out all week because you were sitting out warrants in jail, welcome back to society because you had to have been locked up if you hadn't heard about Ocean Gate, uh, the Titan submersible that tragically lost five lives as it uh, ex excavated to the um, site of the crash of the Titanic that happened back in 1912. Um, it was a been a bizarre week. Um, Tasha, let me just throw it to you with with, with what happened with this. Catch the people up that, that may not have been um, up on this, this story. Well, what happened was you had five gentlemen. One happened to be a billionaire. One was a, a Frenchman. You had a Pakistani, a British father and son duo, as well as the CEO of that tight titan sub right they went down to explore the ruins of like paul said the titanic which tragically sank by hitting an iceberg in 1912 in the northeast atlantic now i'm just gonna get my thoughts off and if it offends you i really don't care <laughs> let's just start this by saying lives were lost yes and, and our and our prayers and condolences do go out to those families who had nothing to do with this. Because you did the, at the end of the day, that those are someone's loved ones. Yes, and they are going to be missed. But with that being said, that's the dumbest shit I never heard of in my life. Now we all like to do thrill-seeking things because I know for sure Paul, Mike, and I are planning on jumping out of a plane. We are. We are. Uh, I had a friend, we went to Belize, she couldn't swim, but she jumped in the middle of the ocean. And she's here today to talk about it. And she's still alive. You have people that paraglide. You had uh, you have people that do parasailing, you know, thrill seeking. You had those people that went up into space on uh, a non-NASA ship. But my thing is, if you're that rich and you're that bored, I got something you can do with that money or with right. that time. Right. To get some of that boredom out of you, you work your entire life to amass this amount of fortune. This is what I put out on Twitter to lose it being foolish in the name, all in the name of thrill seeking. Right. $250,000 per person. Do you know how far that $250,000 could have went? Again, I'm not telling anybody how to spend their money. These are just my thoughts. I'm just saying if I had it, I ain't finna do that. You can find caskets for less than $250,000. Right. And then you had also, of course, I knew this because I read the news all the time. I'm constantly on Twitter reading news. I watch uh, 
all the different news. And even here in the Dominican Republic news, they report on certain things. No one said anything about those people, those 1,500 odd some odd people that have perished trying to get a new life, leaving Libya over in um, in the sea over there by Greece. Right. No they, they, they drowned in those Greek waters. They did. Yes. And to me, that's classism. It's, it's the classic case of classism. Those people are poor, so no one gives a damn about them losing their lives, trying to better their lives. Yeah, they took a risk as well because they paid anywhere from five to eight thousand U.S. dollars to get aboard that ship, which the people who headed that up knew was not safe. Just right. like the CEO of this place. I was going to show a video, but again, I'm on my phone, so I cannot show the video. They knew the risk and they were OK with that. And I'm OK if they were OK with that. But when you look at actually how that thing was assembled. Right. Wasn't safe. No. You had someone from the ID, from the Discovery Channel, not the ID Network, the Discovery Channel, who wanted to go down in it. But once he got in there, he looked around and he said, not me. Right. <laughs> me, me. Hey, what, what, what did, what did uh, Trey say in Boys in the Hood? Let me out, though. Don't let me out. Like, nah. That's what, what he said. And you have James Cameron, who was the director of the Titanic movie, who is an avid diver. And he even said that it was a foolish mission, given the fact of the vessel that it was in. Had it been in a different vessel? Okay. Tasha, you're not getting me to go underwater in unexplored, uncharted territory in something that's shaped like a flashlight. That is no bigger than a minivan, and only one person at a time could stretch their legs out. Now, in our group chat, I told them I am five foot four. That's a that's what one hundred point. What I say, six meters tall. One point six meters tall. I'm not gonna get there because if I got to sit in there like a thing, Charlie used to play the piano for Charlie Brown. My teeth right, right. <laughs> up to my chest and a small toilet to relieve myself and then they only went down there with just the minimal snacks because you know it's supposed to be what six to eight hours right they were they they submerged at 9 a.m they were supposed to re-emerge out of the water at 6 p.m that that was just that was supposed to be the total uh hour amount of that trip so to you all who are just like sensitive don't think the memes are funny they are funny it's sad that we are laughing at this but it is funny, and I'm going to laugh. Again, when you make, and, and one of my friends, I'm not going to mention her name. She's a very, very conservative-minded, thinking Republican woman. Even she pretty much said this is the stupid shit she ever heard of in her life. It, and the my thing is, it was so unnecessary. We, in today's technology, and the thing is, I did a little exercise myself once we, we got really submerged in it, no pun intended, in the group chat about this story as as the days came and, and the developments were unfolding. I went on YouTube to see if I could view the wreckage from the comfort of my own couch, and I was able to. And it no. wasn't even a window on that thing, so what the hell were they going to even look at? You're looking through the same screen that I'm looking at on my couch, and, the, and, and if you were going down there to find the purple herb to be the Black Panther, if you were going down there because there was some special plant on the ocean floor that cures Alzheimer's or help with cancer research or something of that nature, I understand. And I'm like, hey, I tip my cap that you're doing this for the betterment of other people. This was a totally self-serving mission that would have accomplished nothing but, like you said, thrill seeking. And the reason why I, I bring that part up is because you endangered the lives of others who tried to go out there and save you. Yes, that's the selfish part by you doing, again, we're not trying to tell anybody how to spend their money. I right. don't care if they want to take 250 and throw it up in the air and watch it fall. Right. I don't care. But like Paul said, you endangered all these people, wasted all this time and this effort. As Plies tweeted, okay, we searching for these people, we hope everything's okay, but can we use the same time and money, resources, to find some of these missing children throughout America? Right. And that was a that was a, a point that kind of slapped me across the face because it is crazy that you would have the French getting involved, the U.S. Navy getting involved, the Coast Guard getting involved for people who ignored protocol. They the they from my understanding they fired the engineer that said that the boat wasn't safe. The looking at the insides of it, it looks like a horrifying uh, something that you would draw up on a Netflix series. 
that that you know it, it was a it was a death trap. I saw a man with a with a hand wrench wrenching the thing down from the outside, and I was like, "There's no way in the hell that this is gonna survive the pressure of twelve thousand feet below sea level." I, I'm just basically went down in some something made out of paper mache. Right, and and, and the, the 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 contents of which it was made was the primary source of concern. That's why it wasn't uh, given a green light from any governing marine body. Like, what would make someone with 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 two hundred fifty thousand dollars in surplus risk their lives in that fashion for what? What are you gaining from it? It's I'm, I'm I am just dumbfounded at, at the whole at why we even got here in the first place. Um, and, and Tasha, please, I want to ask you this because this this has a spring off question. The most tragic part of it was when I learned that there was a 19 year old kid on board that, by all records, was terrified of going on this trip, but he did so to appease his father, and now his life is over. My question is, and good morning to you, Miss Taylor. My question to you, as a parent and a child, you have a parent as well. At what age is the age when you can push back? Now, if he was seven, nine, even maybe 13, I can understand him not having a say-so in the matter. Daddy saying we're going on the trip, you pretty much go. But at 19, is that an appropriate enough age to be like, Dad, I love you. I know it's Father's Day, but I don't feel comfortable doing this. I'm not going. Well, you know, in those countries like that in the Middle East where they are from, the culture is a little bit different. So I'm not even sure if he had an option to say, Dad, I want to. I don't want to go. You know, it could have been right. present, and from allegedly, from what the aunt is saying, the boy had some sort of reservations about it, and he really didn't want to go. But hey, we're God fearing Christians on this show. That was his intuition, right? And if he had, you know, maybe him and his father did have a bad relationship, and he felt like if I do this with my dad, this would get us in a better place. And that segues to the stepson of the billionaire who's at a Blink One Eighty Two concert. Writing only fans models with a hundred dollars in his pocket. Wow. Because he was just like, you know, he I think it was Cardi B that was questioning why he wasn't grieving, and he was pretty much like, Why should I? Right. Because look, now I done forgave you, bro. Now, like when you and this whole thing is so silly. It reminds me of Samuel L. Jackson in Deep Blue Sea. When he survived that that the uh the being snowed in in the mountains and the avalanche. And then you threw a sinking below the sea and that shark ate your ass. I mean, he, he was in the first 45 minutes of standing on the side and the shark uh, had on his polo sweater and his yes. collar shut. Yes, he did. And his boat shoes and, and the shark ate him. At some point, we got to let God stuff be God. Now, that thing, boat been laying down there in the bottom of the ocean for over 100 years. 100 what is our infatuation with the Titanic, Tasha? I mean, can y'all watch the movie? Can y'all not watch the numerous amount of documentaries that were made about the Titanic? Right. Like, I just don't understand. You can't get out of it. You bolted in. You can't get out and swim through the Titanic. You can't sit in the dining room. You can't play on the on the husk of it. I, I, I just didn't understand. It was just a, a waste of resources, a waste of lives. And, and it is a tragedy. And I do, my heart does go out to their families, not only because they lost loved ones, because they lost loved ones in a fashion to where nobody's sympathizing with them for the most part. Because, I mean, you like the people in Spain running from the bulls. How, how much am I going to grieve for you when the bull catch your ass and sling you up against the wall and kill you? I mean, the thing is, people are giving public sympathy, but of course we can say what we want to say. We can have a little kitchen table talk on the air today. They can't have kitchen table talk when you insert news outlets. You can't get on there and just be like, this is stupid. But you can tell when they answer the, ask the questions. But why would they want to go down? The, that's them saying, y'all know this is stupid, right? Right. And the, the last thing before we put a ball on this and get into some basketball, we got two different versions of this story. Now, the, at first, they they heard a knock on the door. They heard some knocking going on that that – that led us to believe that they still may be alive, hence the rescue mission. But on, on Thursday, when the 96 hours of emergency oxygen they had expired, all of a sudden the story changed to it imploded about an hour and 45 minutes into the trip. Which one do you believe? 
Well, the only reason why I'm inclined to believe this, why they continue to search is because they, because I've been watching this from day one. Again, I'm a news person. I've been watching the news since I was seven. That on Sun on Monday they reported a noise, right? But didn't know what the noise was, and so, right. and from what I'm understanding, that's what made them initially say, "Hey, what about that sub?" Okay. So, so my right. So hopefully, it did go the way that the Coast Guard announced on Thursday afternoon that they imploded and that there was no pain that they didn't even know that that it happened because. Even if the, even through their own misguided stupidity, I would not wish someone counting down their death for four I, days at all. Shouts out to my nephew Carter Paul checking in. Shouts out to my mom AP Coulter checking in. Just a, a wild, bizarre, and tragic story all the way around. Um, Tasha, do you think that this is the end of the Titanic excavations? Are we going to leave this thing alone once and for all? No, it's always going to be somebody else because now they got to go down there and see what happened to the Titan. <laughs> the thing was shaped like a big nose. I'm they not, I'm well not. enough alone. Leave it alone. Right. Them people have been resting down there for 100 years. Leave it alone. All right. Now we do have some, some basketball to get into today. We had the NBA draft uh, go down and, and the long-awaited arrival of the seven-foot-five French monster by the name of Victor Winbanyana. He went number one overall to the San Antonio Spurs. Now, we've heard for, for almost a year leading up to this draft that this kid is supposed to be the next chosen one. He's supposed to be the next LeBron. He's supposed to be the next MJ. Tasha, let's play a quick game of fair or foul. Is it fair or foul to have these type of expectations on the kid that hadn't touched an NBA floor yet? But, you know, they always did that. Remember, Harold Miner was supposed to be the next Jordan. Oh, my God. That was a big swing and miss. I mean, exactly. So, I, I mean, I think it just comes with the territory. It, okay. It, now, the, now, go ahead. Finish your thought. If you're supposedly, you know, quote, unquote, a dominating force and people have been watching you for years, they've seen your game develop. But it's funny. Everyone keeps saying that he's the next LeBron James, but – when he talks, his favorite players are pe people like KD because of the body. Right. They, the they body. are very similar in, in stature. He's 7'5", 115 pounds, soaking wet. Um, I, I, I did watch clips of him playing over in the French League. He does have handles. He can shoot the three. He is a, a premier rim protector. Of course, it's 7'5", with an eight-foot wingspan. Now, with San Antonio, could the third time also be a charm? The, the last two times, the only two times, they had the number one overall pick. They took David Robinson, number one. Overall, he became a Hall of Famer. They won a championship. Then they took Tim Duncan, number one overall. He was a Hall of Famer, won a championship. Do you think it'll be three for three for San Antonio with Mr. Wimbanya? San Antonio needs a lot more than him. But if they are going to do anything, they need to do it early because we know how the body breaks down right. from players who are that tall. He's, right. Uh, he is Great point. And 225 pounds. He is a rail. Right. Is, right. He is model waist thin. Like, <laughs> and you know, when you're that tall, they tend, and that's, I was watching something and he was showing how he massages his feet and how he works out before he does anything on his hands and his feet because your feet break down. Right. When you are that height. I.e. Sean Bradley, who was who was a similar uh, statue. Now, Mr. Glenn, I didn't know he was in San Antonio. Shouts out. He said, living here in San Antonio, these fans are already talking new dynasty. Now, like Tasha said, Tim Duncan had Manu Ginobili. Tim Duncan had Tony Parker. He had other Hall of Famers on that roster with him. So it'll be interesting to see how San Antonio builds a roster around him. What kind of timeline are you giving him, Tasha? You said earlier, you said within the first – Five years ago or so? No, I said they would need to get it because with his body type, we have seen it. Look at Minute Bowl. And right, all, that's another know, great comp. That's another great you comp. You know, players who were that small who had knee, leg, and feet issues because of that height. That's, you know, being 7'5", yeah, that's, hey, that's an anomaly, and it's not too many people that are that tall. But usually those people have issues. So if they are going to do anything, they need to get it done within those first 
first few years before god forbid the boy's body breaks down i mean we we hope not they have different technology and medicines and breakthroughs in medical training and stuff that could keep his body you know preserved a little longer but if they're going to get anything done they need to do it fast and shout out to my, my nephew said that if he's going to get it and if he's going to make him mj he needs to play in the nba which we will see him soon in the summer league but the nba is a grown man's league he is wiry he's thin and like you said with tall people of that length, the seven foot or more, you worry about the feet. You worry about the low extremities. And you you wonder if he can have a 20-year career like a, a, a KD or or a LeBron. It's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see. Now, shout out to Angelo Tate checking in. He just had a play that came out. Uh, make sure that you all go and support that brother. He's doing good jobs. I saw you with a gun in that play. You just trying to pull a jaw on us? He had a gun in it. And, okay, and Ja Tate. Right, Ja Tate. All right, Ja Tate. Shouts out to my cousin Angelo. Good to have you on board today. Natasha, this is a, a sensitive subject with me as far as Mr. Wimbanyana. But so I'm gonna come to you because you're the truth teller. And you know when we're in the booth, we tell the truth. And I want you to be honest with me right now, Tasha. Is the United States, the American-born players, are we losing our stranglehold on the game of basketball? And the reason why I ask is we've talked about this. The last few MVPs, Giannis back to back. Jokic back to back, all uh, born abroad. Embiid won it this last year, born abroad. Luca is next up, born abroad. You look at the last couple of American born, supposed to be superstars, and you've gotten your jokes off on them more than anybody. Zion, Ja, people who are dropping the ball, dropping the mantle, not, not living up to their expectations. Tasha, are we seeing the end of American dominance in the game of basketball? I've always said that in the future that the style of basketball that we were accustomed to you look at how they took out a lot of the rules where you really can't foul anybody you can't put right. your hands on anybody that's american style basketball when they go and play in the olympics in fiba a pan am games they always go by european rules right they don't use our rules and you know you keep allowing these foreign bred players to come over in the nba eventually they're going to take over because they are catering the game now to that style of play. You look at how the game is being right. refereed. You're right. It's it's more international style than it's ever been. Right. Now, Carlos Coronado is checking in. He says Houston is going to have a real squad. Tari Easton is going to handle anything San Antonio got to work with. And I think that goes back to your point that, that there are several missing pieces away. Keep your eye on the Houston Rockets. They had that kid uh, that just got drafted at number 20 that dropped 15, 16 slots. This should have been a top five pick. They got uh, Gerald Green. They got some pieces down there. They're one of the youngest teams in the league, so it's going to take time to grow. But they do have Emmy Udoka down there coaching them now in Houston. So shout right. out to Mr. Coronado, who's a Laker fan, by the way. What are you doing on about Houston as we digress? Tasha's saying, America, get, get your act together because uh, the, the those ships are, are starting to, to hit port and they're giving us that work. Luca giving us that work. Mr. Wimbanyana is supposed to be the next great superstar. Uh, you know, you got Giannis, you got Jokic, you got Embiid, a bunch of great young talent. And I'm getting worried that the American-born players are about to get left behind. KD's long in the tube. Steph, long in the tube. LeBron, you got a year and he's out of here. So uh, I'm worried about the faces of the league, of it being an American-dominated game going forward. He says, I appreciate y'all. Yeah, I'll play a villain in this play. Oh, we saw you with the gun. He said, this is educational, didn't know about international basketball. That's what we are here for, Mr. Angelo. Thank you, Tasha. And John needs some sense, too. Now, this is coming from a nine-year-old, y'all. So, so chill, 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 act together. Jarrell says, my mom's had a great draft. If we resign Kyrie, we cook him with hot grease. They did sign the kid, the center, out of Duke. I like that move. But we're going to get into Kyrie next week. I'm not so sure. Luca going to eat himself out of y'all doing anything. <laughs> right. He, he looked like Luka, me. We he looked like me in his jersey. <laughs> we need to put that. But but the the Southwest division is going to be loaded. You got young superstars in Ja and Luca. You got Win by Yana in this in that division. It's going to be great to see those kids develop. Um. Toss it's time to play a, a game of thumbs up, thumbs down. We had several NBA trades that went down prior to the draft. 
all of which should make should move the needle as far as the championship race in this upcoming season. Let's start with your boy out there on the West Coast. KD, they get Bradley Bill in a trade now. So you swap out CP3 and you bring in Bradley Bill to pair with KD and Booker. Thumbs up for Phoenix, thumbs down on this trade, Tasha. Why, why is this? Because it's KD. What, what, what you, th- <laughs> you like Bill? I kind of want to do it this way. Bradley Bill's got to stay healthy. Yes. Okay. Case, yes, he does. Because, but the thing is, a health, uh, an unhealthy him playing is almost like an old CP3. Yes. Yes. You you write out of my notes here. I'm worried about his his lack of playing, and also I'm worried about the depth of the team. They gave up so many pieces to get KD. Then you had to give up more pieces to get Bill. Tasha, they have five players under contract right now going into free agency. So you know they're going to be filling them the rest of the roster with the me and the mics of the world. But the thing is, these teams are building to win now. Teams like that who feel like we got, you know, we got one of the greatest foot, uh, football, one of the greatest basketball players in the history of the game on our team, and we can build around him and we need to win now. They don't have time. When you got, like you said, players long in the two, they don't have time to be out here and keep playing around. And right. what Carlos was saying, Houston, I do see a lot of upswing in Houston. They're young. Right. They can build off of that. Right. Once they build and get going, I mean, who knows? It may be Houston and Denver that may be the top because those those guys are young on that Denver team. Hey, Jalen Green, Michael Porter Jr., they got some hitters on that. Uh, uh, Kenyon Martin Jr., they got you some look, young studs on that team. They and look do. at Sacramento. Sacramento's young. That's another one. They're young. And De'Aaron Fox ain't going nowhere. He's entering his prime right now. So, yeah, and, uh, like yeah. a team like Phoenix, or maybe it's also, too, where you play. I think a lot of times these players play for these sorry teams, and they be like, no, uh-uh, I'm, I'm calling that. I'm calling in. Right. I'm sick today. <laughs> right. I'm sick. <laughs> that the low management, uh, quote, unquote. But, KD, let me put you, let me, let me, let me, let me put you on notice, KD. KD, we get it. You don't play with every superstar in the damn league not named LeBron James. It's time for you to get over the hump. Now, what I will give Phoenix credit for was the fact that they were the only team in last in this past playoffs that pushed Denver. They were tied 2-2 going into game five without CP3 because he was out. You throw in a Bradley Bill who can give you that third score when those two need to take a rest. They couldn't take a break. KD and DeBooker couldn't come off the court because they had no one else that could score when they when they took rest. So maybe in a win now mode, one season, it's worth it if you get a ring out of this. Maybe they have that third score that can match wits with a Denver if they meet up in the playoffs again. We shall see. I'm giving that one the thumbs down until I see the rest of their roster. Now, CP3, the guy who was shipped off for Bradley Bill, he got moved to Washington, but now he's a Golden State Warrior. So Golden State basically picked up 38-year-old CP3 and traded away 24-year-old Jordan Poole to Washington. Tasha, thumbs up, thumbs down on that move for Golden State. I mean, to me, you got too many people playing the same position there and trying to do the same thing. I mean, listen to the shows. Everyone seems to think that this is a great deal. Have they uh, won uh, CP3 the last three years? In the playoffs, he's sitting on the side with us. I'm just saying, uh, everybody out there, oh, this is great for the Golden State Warriors because you got this player in CP3, and I don't see it that way. Um, it depends on if they get rid of Clay, what they're going to do with Clay. Right. But Steph is somebody who who needs to have the ball in his hand, right. you know, and so does CP3 because other than that, what is he going to do? Right. He's so not I'm, an off-the-ball spot-up shooter. You can't just stick CP3 in the corner and have him just shoot threes. Right, which is what you can do with Steph, but Steph is the primary ball handler. Right. And if you have CP3 there, that, that's going to make CP3 the primary ball handler because he can't do much else. What are they going to do with Clay? What are they going to do with, oh, don't you believe it? What are they going to do? Don't you believe it is 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 Draymond Green, and we're gonna to get to him in just a second. If you don't understand why she said that, then just let that go over your head. For those that get it, y'all are gonna y'all are gonna appreciate that on the playback. Because <laughs> will CP3 and Steph get along, Angelo? That's a great question because these two have butted heads in the playoffs for the better part of ten years, and we all know that Steph 
ended the the Lob City era when he crossed up CP3 and had him laying there in that chalk outline. And, and and it should be interesting to see if they're going to be able to get along. But back to Tasha's point, which is a great point. The the who handles the ball. Steph is deadly in the pick and roll game because he can come off the pick and hit from 30 feet out. CP3's game is not predicated that way. He mostly wants to hit the big man who's rolling to the basket. You need Steph out there to honor that pick and roll because you can't go under a Steph Curry pick and roll. You're just asking for him to just score 50 on you. Exactly. So what do you, like you said, there's too many people that just make fries and nobody that makes the burger. For them, plus you sit in the way Jordan Poole, who's 24 years old, averaging 24 points a game as a starter. Tasha, it looks like Golden State chose Draymond again. Remember, it was Draymond that ran KD out of town. But in the beginning with that KD, the Warriors sided with KD. Remember, the Warriors initially sided with KD, but when the rubber met the road and KD was looking to walk at the end of the year. You're supposed to ship off Draymond Green if you wanted to keep that big three together because they would still be winning titles now if KD was there instead of um, Draymond. But see, now Draymond didn't punch this kid in the face. The whole world saw it, and they just shipped him off after re-signing him to a, a huge bruh, contract. Bruh, bruh, it would still be some furniture moving had that been me. We'd still be in that practice arena right now. I would have drilled... Yeah, he would have got me, but as soon as he walked away, I would have came up like uh, Michael Clark Duncan did in Players Club when he hit <laughs> when he hit him upside the head. I would hit him, and they they would still be picking his body parts up out that that floor if that had been me. Now Carlos is a six foot six, two hundred and fifteen pound former football player bully. That's what he is. So of course he's gonna say sometimes you have to punch your boy in the face. How many of your friends have you beat up, Carlos? I'm sure it's been several. He All I got to say, Carlos, got. couldn't have been me. <laughs> but see, Carlos is from the West Coast. He, he about that that hit him up. <laughs> Could, couldn't have been me if Look, I was Jordan Poole. <laughs> we fighting at Hobby Lobby. We fighting at Krispy Kreme. We I'm going to get at, you in that shower. I'm going to come we, in there fully dressed in that shower and peace we, roll your ass. It's just going to go down. We, we fighting everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, there, somebody's going to catch me footage of getting my get back. If I got to hit you in the head with a chair, if we got to go WWE style. <laughs> if I got to throw you off the, the, the San Francisco bridge like the rock did right. so cold. <laughs> off the Golden Gate Bridge. Behind you. <laughs> we, it's, 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 I'm going to get my, my comeback. Now he said someone's going to get their respect for sure. And you know who that person is? Draymond Green. Think about the timeline of this. Draymond Green opts out of his contract, and all of a sudden Jordan Poole gets shipped off, which clears the cap space to re-sign him to a lucrative deal. If you're Draymond Green right now, you got to feel like Gorilla Nuts because not only did you knock that young kid out, the, 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 the organization stood behind you and removed him from the situation, and they're going to re-sign him. Right. The, the call, yeah, <laughs> Carter said choke slam is... What you know about a choke slam, Carter? Morning, Steph. Check in, in, but I'm with you, Tasha. It's gonna be on site. I cannot wait to Washington and Golden State play because you better not go up for a layup, Draymond. I'm coming under them legs. I'm gonna be like, uh, what's his name in uh, above the rim when he came out with that pat 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 and on the on the on the court. Right, right, <laughs> right. Uh, a white man can't jump. I'm gonna come back with my gun and I'm gonna shoot everybody on this court. When I get back, he says he watches WWE. Yes, your son is in the goon squad today. On your mama's account at that. On mama's account. She's did, outside walking Buster right now. Did mama call to approve of this? <laughs> That's right, Carter. Carter, Carter. Make sure y'all follow him on TikTok, by the way, if y'all haven't followed him before. Well, so, so Tasha, you saying thumbs down on this move then, right? I don't like it. I don't like the move either. Now, let's go to the East Coast. Boston is breaking up their core. They're, they shipped off Marcus Smart, and they're bringing in Chris Stapps, Porzingis. Thumbs up, thumbs down, Tasha. I like that. I'm going to give that a thumbs up. I like it. I mean, I like Marcus Smart. He was, you know, he was a good player. And what I kind of call Boston, you know, without the, the other element, the kind of the grit and grind of the North. Yes. 
Yes, the grit and grind of the North. And um, let's see. No, oh, yeah, yes, you did, Carl. <laughs> All right. He says, we banging at breakfast, baptismals, quinceaneras, Draymond. Yes. Where, wherever you wherever you go, I'm coming out the casket like the Undertaker. <laughs> it's on site, Draymond. We going to fight. All right. Tasha, I agree with you. I love this move. Um, Chris Stapps to Boston because you can't keep running back that same squad that's coming up short. You got to change something up. You got to. If your if your food keeps coming up bland, you got to change the seasoning. You got to switch something up. You got to do something. And Chris Stapps, although he may have, quote, unquote, underachieved when he was in Dallas, he was a unicorn in New York, and he played well in Washington. He was a 20 and 10 person. He, and he wasn't injured. You think about it. Great point. And he was not injured. The He gives you better shooting than Al Horford. He's younger. He can give you the same rebounding as Robert Williams, who's always injured. So I think, yes, I like that move. If you're, if you're Boston, you have to shake that up. Now, coincidentally, one man's trash can be another man's treasure because Marcus Smart got shipped off to Memphis. Tasha, do you like Memphis picking up Marcus Smart? Thumbs up, thumbs down. I like a thumbs up with that, and it's not for the reason that everybody thinks and like a lot of people are saying. It's already a locker room full of grown men. Everybody said, oh, he can be Jaws out there and tell Jaws. And that's been the storyline. And that's been, that has been the national storyline. But Jaws got a daddy and his ass be sitting on the sideline every game. So that ain't, that ain't Marcus Smart job to, to go out there and be T. Morant the second. So, I mean, but I like it because of his style of play. He's a hard, you know, hard nosed player. Kind of like, if, like I said, if Gold Tooth stayed healthy. Can you imagine Stephen Adams, Marcus yes. Smart, and all them out there bumping around? Yes. It shouts out to mom shaking it. So Carter took the phone, not the laptop. That's right, Carter. That's right. Stay, stay involved. Stay engaged in the show. You're going to learn something. Tasha, I I agree um, with pairing him with, with the other starters on the team. I do agree that, that he shouldn't be T. Morant. But I'm worried. This is the one thing that gives me pause. I'm going to go this way like you did. I'm going to go this way. Thumbs up from a standpoint that he is a, a, a no-brainer upgrade over Dylan Brooks. He's a former defensive player of the year, so you don't lose anything defensively by replacing Brooks with him. Offensively, he shot 46% from the field, which was a career high. You have to honor his shot. We saw in the Lakers series that they were not even guarding Dylan Brooks. They were daring him to shoot in the corner, but he was throwing up bricks. So you can't go four on five against a playoff team and, and win a series. So I like it there. Here's why I'm concerned. T. Morant, John ja Morant, are they going to be mature enough to handle a grown ass man in the locker room? This guy is a rough rider. He ain't no punk. The 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 Dylan Brooks for all of his craziness. He will put a battery in Jaw's back. He never stood up to Jaw. He right. encouraged the foolishness because he was foolishness. Uh, Marcus Smart? <laughs> Marcus. How you going to call that grown-ass man foolishness? It was foolishness. Come on now. You know he was, they doing all this and dancing and, and, and doing, come on, man. The Memphis Grizzlies turned into an AAU team last year, and you know it. They were very immature. They doing like Jaw. Josh sitting on the sideline dancing when we getting blown out because he scored 40. You know what I'm saying? Just immature stuff. Marcus Smart, don't play like that. Marcus, right. Marcus Smart will call out uh, Jalen Brown. He called out um, uh, Jason Tatum. He called out the coach last year in the playoffs for calling bad plays. He ain't the one that's going to be sitting there quiet while we losing on the road because John the strip club. He might swing on John. <laughs> right. And that's why I said that's why I also think the – them missing Stephen Adams, right? At the end, AKA gold tooth. Yeah, gold tooth. Yeah, I mean, yeah, y'all know he looked like somebody to put a gold tooth in and be like, <laughs> 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 so you know, I just think with you having Marcus Smart there with Stephen Adams coming back, right? That's a that's a good uh, mix of grown men that ain't with that foolishness. They're not gonna be dancing and hitting the gritty on the court and all that old stuff. Like, what was that? What's, what's it, Marvin? He said, well, sit your ass down. Woo! <laughs> what was that? Oh, no, everybody hates Chris. <laughs> like, actually, I'm a Ravens fan. <laughs> sit your dumb ass down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, it was on Abbott Elementary. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what is, look what that 
that episode where he said he didn't eat bacon to do <laughs> throughout his broom? <laughs> what you say? <laughs> if y'all don't watch Abbott Elementary, please go back and watch Abbott right, Elementary. We got seven weeks until the NFL preseason starts, so make you, that's plenty of time to watch both seasons. <laughs> it is a treasure. Um, okay, so we so we we both like that, but y'all, Ja, come back hat in hand. Because you know Marcus Smart's going to be running point the first 25 games while you're sitting out uh, on suspension. When you come back, come back with your hat in hand and just blend in because Marcus Smart is going to have a voice. He's going to sit behind that podium and be like, we need to grow the hell up. We need to, you know, we, we got to do what we got to do. Oh, you know that's my favorite show. Everybody hates Chris. That's it. Um, So we'll give that a thumbs up. Um. Yeah, they went off when he said he didn't like pizza, too. They was like, what? They said they in that break room. <laughs> she said it's pizza. <laughs> he said, do you eat pie? I don't think uh, food should be heated up. <laughs> All right, let's we digress. Now, Tasha, there was a trade that didn't happen that I want to get a thumbs up or thumbs down on. There was all of this speculation that this is going to finally be the year that that – that uh, Dame Dollar gets out of Portland. It didn't happen before the draft. If for Portland, did you give them a thumbs up or thumbs down for holding on to Dame Dollar a- another year? If I'm staying, I'm staying, and you and you and you, you gonna love me was a person. Dame, man, you done did all you can out of right. the great Northwest. Right. Bruh. Right. And the thing is, we don't even care no more that you used to speak out against teaming up with other superstars. You tried it in Portland. You tried and you tried and love But don't nobody want to go to so... Portland number one. So right. it may be time for you to team up with somebody. Right. I need to see you in Miami. You you need to play with Bam and, and, and Butler and go ahead and get you a championship. This is ridiculous. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to get my boy Chauncey Billups fired. Right. You can't straddle the fence in the NBA. Either you rebuild or you're playing for a championship right now. They're, the in-between people, they get washed away. They get washed at sea. So I'm going to give Portland a thumbs down on that. What are you holding on to him for? You didn't even make the play-in tournament last year with him scoring 50 points a game. Again, like I said, no player wants to go up up there. It's not the jailblazers of, of the Bass. It's not right. the uh, – uh, Terry Porter, the uh, Clyde Drexler, when they was in the finals, when, when Portland was popping, on and right. popping. Uh, nobody wants to go there, man. Who wants to go to Portland? You have to get traded there or you have to get sent there via tra- – I mean, drafted there or, or traded there. No superstar has willingly went to go team up with with uh, with Dame Dollar out there in Portland. What the hell is that to do out there in Portland anyway? It I mean, shout out, 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 out to my cousin. He's a, a Detroit player. He lives in Portland, and he works at one of the biggest Lexus dealerships in Portland. So if you're in Portland and you want a Lexus. Right. Holla at you, boy. Holla at my boy. <laughs> well, shouts out to him. But unfortunately, he does not play for the Blazers. So if And, and the Blazers just got Scoot Henderson. You got your young rookie phenom that you can build around now. You know how many pieces – you can get for for Damian Lillard. You just blew a golden opportunity at this trade deadline. Miami could would have jumped in. Hell, Milwaukee could have jumped in. There's so many teams that are right there, just one player away from a championship that you could have been the missing piece. And now you like now what? You got Scoot and you got Dame Dollar. You're gonna finish 11th in the West again and miss the play in. Now what? Another rap album? Miss me with that. Um, and last but not least, Tasha. Thumbs up, thumbs down on a move that wasn't made. We thought that Zion might be on the trading block. New Orleans decided to keep him. Don't you laugh. Don't you laugh. Don't you laugh. Um, Nick Carter's getting a little upset with us because that's his favorite player is Dame Tom. Bro, what about Dame Tom? Well, who, who Tom? Yes, Dame Tom. He got to get out of Portland. Now, Zion did not get moved. Tasha, your thoughts on New Orleans holding on to their – Prize number one overall pick. Thumbs up, thumbs down. The only reason why I'm giving the thumbs up, who else finna deal with that mess? <laughs> so, so what, what was that we were just talking about off camera that just recently happened yesterday? So his uh, his crazy stalker 
somebody need to need to definitely do a 5150 hold at with the quickness on that one. Y'all tell me why she just done got went and got a tattoo of Zion's name on her cheek. No, not a not not a little bitty tattoo. She went Mike Tyson with it. Across the like I, like I like I told you in the car this morning. He doesn't want you. Can't you get that through your greasy head? I don't care how many threats you send in the commissioner, right. the Republicans, you at them in your tweets, which her account has been suspended because of that. And you know the commissioner probably had that done. You 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 tweeting a, the, the, a team to trade your ex boyfriend. Who does that? Nobody wants to is going to want to deal with that type of foolishness. So I mean, first of all, I, let's go back to them even signing him that money when they right. did. I told Mike and I both said we thought it was a bad idea right. to sign him to that contract because he was never healthy. His weight has always been an issue. So now, then, now look at read this. Yes. <laughs> shout out to Tubi. And shout out to Tiffany Rowe because she done sent me a couple of Tubi movies that I'm actually going to watch today. <laughs> if y'all not on them Tubi movies, y'all, these are some of the most bootleg movies. But they you sit are. There and you'd be like, hmm. They are. They really are. And it'd be fun. And it'd be fun. It need to be called Tubi Fubu for us by us. Because it'd be us in their movies. And you'd be like, hmm. <laughs> Go ahead, Tasha. I'm sorry. That was a good one. Go ahead. So, so you got him under contract now. He's played 29 games last season. He's played, like, I think 59 games in the last two seasons. You ain't, he, you ain't, like, come on, man. There are 82 game seasons. Now you got this wacko, this, as they said on the wedding crasher, a stage five clinger who done, done put his name on her face. Like, why did you? Not a wacko. See, I was going to call her a bunny cooker, but I didn't think a lot of people would understand that reference. Of things Anybody that our age would understand that, a bunny cooker. Yes, we yeah, all saw that movie. you ain't never seen Fail Attraction. Shout, shout out to Michael Douglas and uh, what's her name? Uh, Glenn Close. Yes. Uh, uh, boiling bunnies in the kitchen because she need that work put on her. Maybe it's like, I'll put that thing on her. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm sorry. My nephew watching. We're going to keep this PG. Well, she said she said it wasn't all that. I'm just Y'all always say it's, it's not all that after it's all said and done. None of us are called good lovers after we, we have a nasty breakup. Fellas, can I get an amen on that? None of us are... Uh, well, he was such and such... He just wasn't very responsible. You don't hear that. We all trash. That's, that's, Carter said, I'm good. No, you ain't good. Get off of TikTok too while we at it. Um, Zion, New Orleans, and Mount Moriah. This is a damn tragedy <laughs> of titanic proportions, no pun intended. Um, How's she going to make money on, on OnlyFans with Zion across her cheekbone now? First of all, I don't know how she was making money with the way that body was built all wrong. He said, speak for yourself, bro. We got a shout out for you too, Langston. Uh, coming up a little bit later in the show. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> by the way, he ate the rest of the macaroni shop. Carter is having fun in the chats. My sister's macaroni is bomb ass. All right. Speaking of macaroni, that gets us into... T Sizzle's top five this week. Now, I always get anxiety when Tasha comes on her annual state fair visit because one, because she's this type of clean freak with the with the glove. So I'm not I'm out here scrubbing up under the tub. I'm scrubbing the chimney. I'm on the patio doing the rails. I'm, I'm getting ready. But another thing is, she will inspect your refrigerator. So glad Tiffany ain't here right now. And <laughs> she will inspect your refrigerator. Let's just put it like that. She will inspect your refrigerator. And there was a story that came out earlier this week that uh, Walmart or Great Value had a recall on their frozen fruits. Now, anybody who knows me knows that I, I'm. You, if I was a superhero, there would be a G and a V right here on my chest because I'm cheap. All right? I'm cheap. I will buy great value. Everything in my freezer is great value, but the fruit. So Tasha, she ain't with that great value everything. As a matter of fact, before this story even came out, she would often scold me with like, Paul, everything can't be great value. 
So let's put her to the test today. We're going to have T-Sizzle's top five items that must be named brand. The floor is yours. Oddly enough, guys, I don't know if they still hitting, but for great value, you got some barbecue potato chips. Really? Man, oh. I like that. I don't know if you know everything that changed the recipe and the formula on everything now, but that for great value, barbecue chips was that one. But with that being said, <laughs> I have to have French's mustard. Yes, French's mustard. Langston, definitely. Yes. Yes, and that's on my list too. But down here, they don't sell French's. They sell Heinz mustard. Okay, so, well, I rock with Heinz. I rock with Heinz. Heinz is good. So I have to have that. Uh, Steph, mayonnaise ain't on the list because I don't eat mayonnaise. No, I eat mayonnaise, and that does have to be name brand. If it's not Miracle Whip or Hellman's, I'll just use another condiment. Uh, I cannot use the for great value jelly. I tried the grape jelly. It ain't you the same. That and that's for great value. I said, uh, uh. I, threw, I, I remember I put it on some biscuits, and I threw the, I, I put it on one just to taste it. I threw that shit in the garbage. It was just that I can't do it. So I cannot have uh, cheap mustard. I cannot have cheap cheese. I no, cannot definitely have not cheap cheese. You can. T it don't even melt on the burger. That, that pasteurized, non-name brand cheese? I can't have cheap jelly. Uh, pretty much, and, and to be honest, Paul, that's all I have. It's really, all of my things are condiment related. I cannot okay. have generic condiments. Because most of the stuff for great value, I didn't, I mean, the for great value water, I can't drink that water. It's disgusting. It tastes like milk. Now, the Sam's Wait, 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 what? It's nasty. That Sam's Choice water, which is also Walmart, tastes a lot better than that for great value. If I see for great value water, I'm just going to swallow hard. I'm looking over at my pantry like, okay, I got to get that out of here before October. Um, <laughs> now, the, you, can't, you can't have great value soda. But right, the, the cheese be sitting on top of your food. Right. Your burger is this big now. Because you done, you done cooked it to a crisp trying to melt that cheese. No, you can't have great value soda. Like, when we were kids, we would have Big K at, at the cookouts, and then the grown folks get to have Coke and Pepsi and all of that. But I grew up in a home where we had name brand soda. So, shouts out to my mama for that. We never had Ruby's Cola or Joe Cola or, uh, you know, uh, anything like that. We had Canada Who the Dry. hell is Ruby's Cola? <laughs> <laughs> We had we had Canada Dry, Coca Cola, please, and Pepsi, and the kids drank lemonade or tea because we couldn't have soda when we when, until it was until it was dinner time. Yes, yeah, she bougie Langston. She sure is. Stephanie said we didn't drink no Doctor Thunder. <laughs> Don't give me no damn Doctor Thunder or no Mister Pib. I was only time I get a Mister Pib. Remember Mister Pib? Mister Pib is is is. The one that walked at um, White Castle is okay, but I need my Dr. Pepper. I miss White Castle. Speaking of which, um, uh, chocolate chip cookies. You, you don't you don't mind having non name brand? They have, do they have to be Keebler? I mean, I I bake all my cookies, so. Oh, okay. So so they are name brand. They T sizzles chocolate chisels. That's what we're talking about. What about ice cream? Can you eat Great Value ice cream? I don't eat ice cream. See, that's why you can wear an outfit like that. And I got on the big 3X t-shirt right now. All right. Um, he said, what about, remember Tab? Yes, I remember Tab in the pink can with the yellow writing on it. Who drank that? Like, Who, I, I ain't never drunk a Tab. You remember Double Cola? What was it doubling up on? I don't know. Probably some of that K-Roll syrup because it was black as an RC. <laughs> what you say it was black as Nipsey's gums? What? It's like that was, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's like, no, nah, man, you bullshit, man. Everybody, drink. we didn't have tab either. I don't. We don't know what that was in. And you know, those black houses didn't have diet sodas. Yeah, cause we don't drink no diet soda. Interesting. Now the diet Dr. Pepper's hit though. I got them one day because they didn't have regular Dr. And that's my vice when it comes to pop. Because I now, don't. Drink I'm a Coke Zero guy now that I'm counting my calories. I but do that, that, that died Dr. Pepper go hard in the paint. That died, Dr. Pepper has such a, a strong and, and unique taste. 
Like, oh, well, I don't know. Um, but no, okay, good job by you. Uh, Coke, yeah, Coke, and Coke Zero, zero sugar, zero calories, just enough fizz to burn up that chicken wing, you know. But, but I don't what? like, see, I don't like Coke or Pepsi. I really? only, no, I only drink Dr. Pepper, and if there's no Dr. Pepper, I'll get a Sprite. If Dr. I have Pepper to have a Pepper. Like, like Domitap, what the hell is Domitap? Is that medicine? Hey, mute her, mute her right now, because there would be no. Dr. Pepper, and I be paying about ten dollars for a can of six down here. Y'all, look, I'm gonna let y'all peek behind T Sizzle's camera for a minute because while she shows you that, she has people in her life in the Dominican Republic who are very, very good to her, who now do things for her, who do things for her, and she won't even give them a damn can of Dr. Pepper. I had to petition for her to give one of her friends a Dr. Pepper for an hour on a FaceTime call before. Because she didn't want to come off a damn Dr. Pepper. And he done built her a bridge. He done put a chimney on her roof. He done gave her a kidney and everything. And she couldn't even get a, give up one damn Dr. Pepper. I he had bad. one last week, too, when he came over. I felt bad for the brother. I felt bad for him. Tasha, who you shouting out this week? I'm shouting out two people. Uh, my baby daddy's birthday is this Who that week. is? And then my baby daddy. Okay. His, uh, birthday is this week. Uh, and then I'm shouting out, I need everyone to pay attention. The mm. Pearl Cone Class of 93. Come on. I've tried to reach out to everyone and no one, barely anyone's responding. I don't want to hear anyone say, I didn't know, no one contacted me. You have been texted, you have been Facebooked, you have been everything about our upcoming reunion plans where we're going to do an international thing. Yay. So you could, Class of 93, go on to the page, the, the Pearl Cone Class 93 on Facebook, uh, and look at the information that we're putting on there. But but for those of you who have reached back out to me, we're going to do this thing. We, we getting it done. A little wine, a little dine, a little zip line. We, yeah, basically, we getting it done 30 plus one. That's what we're doing. Yes, getting it done in the 30 plus one shouts out. Um, I want to give a shout out to, to the friend of the show, our big brother, Mr. Langston, on his announcement earlier this week. Congratulations. Going to be in a, a poll again. Congratulations to you, sir. Yeah, father, father MC in the house. Congratulations. Langston, you. you ain't shooting words by now. How old are you? You ain't it, man. Tasha, Tasha, where's that mute? Did you say I can mute you from my end? What, but what no, babies are a blessing. No, and he Langston, says eyes to Pappy. And Langston, That's right, Langston, you give the rest of us hope, bro. He about to hit the Tarantino and Langston, status. Bring, bring the baby down here to TT. Let TT rock it and give it a nap. I'm calling it now. It's going to be a boy, and that boy is going to go to Pearl Cone and, ru and break uh, Langston's rushing record is what's going to happen. Right, we're going we gonna to do it like Bronny and LeBron. That's how we're going to get this thing done. Congratulations as he holds his grandson in his arms. And he says, yes, he definitely will do that. Ooh, yeah, he's starting yeah, He's starting again. But, hey, this time he got a big old house to put that baby in. You know what I'm saying? He, <laughs> that baby ain't going to be wanting for nothing. <coughs> um, Carlos said, you don't know the love until you have a baby. Hello, congrats. And congrats to you on your firstborn, Mr. Carlos Coronado. Hopefully, you ain't punching people in the face no more. Hopefully, the baby done calmed you down. As the congratulations continue to pour in. Um, so, shouts out to all of you fathers. And happy belated Father's Day to you, too, uh, Carlos Coronado. Um, but that's all the shout outs I got uh, for today. You know, I think we got everybody wrapped up. Type yes to congratulations for Los and Langston coming in. We see we hit the extra point. We're gonna honor the good men. We have good men in our chat. I can totally vouch for Carlos is a good man. Langston is a good man. Good men, good fathers that that are real, real men, real leaders of their household. We applaud that. We respect that. And y'all should be highlighted more because I think the the latter gets highlighted far too much. Yeah. And on that note, Tasha, you know how we get down. We will see you all. You're most welcome, sir. We'll see you in six days and 23 hours. And guess what happens when we come on next week? It's the start of NBA free agency. Will Kyrie be a Laker? Where will Chris Middleton go? Who's going to pull the rabbit out of the hat? Find out next week on the Extra Point. 
Until then, he's a good man. He's a Savannah. good man, Savannah. <laughs> he's a good man, Savannah. <laughs>